My name's Emma Carey. I'm the managing partner of MSB. Um, And it's been my pleasure to hold a series of podcasts in which we've talked to the next generation of lawyers that are coming coming through MSB. And, And in this episode, I've got Phil, who is a partner at MSB. I've got Callum, and Callum will tell us tell us his good news um, shortly. And I've got Molly as well, who works in our conveyancing department. Um, so I'd just like to open up by asking you all to just tell me a little bit about how you've got to where you are today in MSB. What's your journey been um, in becoming? Shall I go first? <laughs> a lawyer. Yeah, you go first, um, Phil. So um, I... Um, Never went to university and took right. a less traditional route, I suppose, if you call it that. I, I did my A-levels, um, didn't really have an opportunity to go to university at that stage, and I signed up to do a journalism course, actually. Okay. Um, it got cancelled. I, <laughs> I needed a job, um, and I uh, became an office junior in a solicitor's firm. Right. And that's kind of how I got a foot in the door, mm-hmm. making the tea and doing the copying. Right, okay. Um, and within a year of that, uh, I was promoted, uh, and then I found out about uh, the ILEX route. Right. Um, So I signed up to do the ILEX route, uh, which was night school. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was doing that two nights a week uh, whilst working. Um, It took about, I think it took about eight years to qualify by the end of it um, as a a legal executive as it was then. Um, And that gave me an opportunity to do a graduate diploma in law, which was weekends, um, and then the LPC. Thankfully, by then, my training contract was exempted uh, because of all <laughs> yeah, of that time. Um, so became a solicitor in 2011. Um, okay. Uh, and soon after that, became a partner in the, the same firm I'd trained at. Right. Um, and then I uh, joined MSB five years ago um, as an um, associate. Uh, and now I'm a, a partner in the social housing and regeneration team. That's great. And, and how about well, you, Callum? It's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I sort of took probably you could probably say it's more of a circuitous route as well in a way because <laughs> I did history at uni okay. initially um, and then did the, G- the GDL, then did the LPC. Um, had a bit of a gap between uni and doing those as well mm-hmm. when I was sort of unsure of what to do and where to go and okay. all that sort of stuff really. Um, then got a training contract probably 18 months after finishing the LPC. Mm-hmm. Um, I did sort of a mix at first. I did a lot of crime. Right, um, okay. As well as family, private clients. Um, and then I started at um, MSB about 18 months ago. Um, and then I've just been promoted to um, senior associates. So. Yeah, so that's fantastic. That's Everything's really good news. Well. We're all delighted for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Molly, what about you? So I started when I was probably about 17 working um, work experience in a solicitors in Allen um, Road. And then I got invited back six weeks to do a summer placement with them. So I stayed there for six weeks in the conveyancing department, a bit similar to Phil doing the tea, you know, making the <laughs> coffee. Um, and then I went, obviously finished my A-levels, following my A-levels, went to um, a firm in Liverpool City Centre to get some experience in a remortgage department right, in okay. Conveyancing. And then I landed myself in MSB as an assistant. Um, and then within the last year, I've worked my way up to being a, a junior for Vienna. So I'm in the Conveyancing department at the moment doing my Silex, that, obviously through MSB, which is great. That's fantastic. And so, I mean, from what, what, what you're saying, not all of you decided, you know what, I want to be... A lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like what you wanted to do when you when you were ch- when you were children. What what do you think made? Did, what did you want to do when you were younger? And and what kind of made you think? No, I'm going to go into the law. Uh, well, for, for me personally, like a lot of boys, I suppose, to be a footballer and okay, dream high, uh, which is never going to happen. <laughs> Um, so then I convinced myself I was going to be a sports journalist and okay. um, hence the journalism course, but it, it all got cancelled. Um, but um, Could be a I, sports lawyer. I, 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 I've looked at that in the past, but um, I was kind of Yeah, happy. I had a dream to that in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the firm I joined originally was a legal aid firm. We helped mm-hmm. um, tenants at that point, um, kind of who were losing homes or, or various other issues. And um, it, it just kind of 
grabbed my interest really and mm-hmm. kind of I wanted to do that. I became a duty solicitor um, doing housing work and um, helping people who just turned up to court without representation or anything prepared. Um, so it felt good kind of stopping people being evicted at that point. Um, and then that's kind of how I got into it really and I wanted to progressive from there. And how, how do you kind of feel sat on the, the other side of the fence at the minute? Um, yeah, well, probably for, I'd say, more, more than 10 years now I've acted for, for landlords. Um, and so it's acting for social landlords in particular, um, th- th- they've got a good ethos. So if, mm-hmm. um, you know, if someone really does need help, um, then, then they're given the help and they're not usually yeah. evicted. Yeah. Um, it's, I, it, there are times when it, it is hard, but a lot of the time it's, it's positive because actually the, the effect of, say, antisocial behaviour upon um, neighbours and other residents yeah. in a community yeah. is mm-hmm. awful. Um, so, you know, one person call, causing antisocial behaviour, whether it's noise or attacking people or drugs, um, is having a, a really terrible effect on a whole community. So it's a, it's a positive thing in that respect. And, and I suppose the threat of court proceedings hanging over people hopefully is what they need to make them reform their behaviour. Um, yes, they're give, given kind of more than every opportunity, really. It's, um, you know, the, the court's kind of a last resort and even um, when, when orders are made sometimes um, it's not the end and they're given further mm-hmm. chances. So um, it's it, it's in their hands and... Um, you know, we that they're referred on to capable solicitors who can help them as well. So, yeah, um, you know, it, 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 we do try to help as well. Yeah, of course. And what about you, Callum? Um, I was probably one of those people who really has about ten different ideas about <laughs> what they want to do and can't decide really. To be honest, I think that's probably why I initially ended up doing history at uni rather right. than because I had some work experience with law beforehand Mm -hmm. and then I wasn't sure what to do and then I just made the decision that I'll do a subject that I know I really enjoy Mm -hmm. um and then you found that a lot of people who who did history went on to do the GDL and the LPC it was sort of like a popular but probably like unorthodox route to take for a lot of people on the course so a lot of people on my degree had that planned for the future sort of thing right um in terms of what I wanted what those other things want to do. <laughs> Probably wanted to, yeah, like you say, be, be a footballer. Yeah. <laughs> or, we ain't any good. <laughs> not the best. No, me neither. But, um, I used to want to be a pilot as well when I was a kid. Okay. And that, but yeah, it's probably the most expensive thing to. To want get to into. do, yeah. Although to be in a lawyer is pretty expensive by <laughs> yeah. the time you do everything. Yeah. yeah. That was probably one of the reasons that I had that bit of a gap between um, uni and going back to the. To, the um, GDL because it was you know do you want to invest those extra years Mm -hmm. and those extra funds and Mm -hmm. you know sort of weighing up whether that was something you wanted to commit to really yeah Yeah. and and you're a family lawyer now so did you always think you would be a family lawyer and you know it's really interesting Jack did family law and that was something that yeah that Jack had fancy doing and you you find out so much in these podcasts about people so because I remember yeah, I remember that when you're doing um, training contracts or you, when you see people mm-hmm. move around different mm-hmm. seats. And because we've both do family, you sort of think it's probably something that most people would be interested in or suited to or whatever. And you really see that difference in, I think you need to be sort of well suited to, to dealing with the clients and to dealing with the issues because it, it really affects some people much more than others, I think, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and was it family you always wanted to do or have um, you kind of fell into it or...? Sort of had an idea that I'd like to do family. Um, I also liked crime as well, as I said right, before. Okay. So I did a lot of crime at the start, but sort of did a mix um, when I first did the training contract of mm-hmm. family and crime because there is a bit of a crossover, a crossover at times. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I started doing the financial remedy work and... A lot of the people, well, a lot of people in the local area do a lot of care work and a lot Mm -hmm. of um, public family law, but that didn't really appeal to me. It was more the private stuff and the the financial remedy work that sort of found my niche then, I think. Okay, that's great. And what about you, Molly? Did Did you know you wanted to do property or...? I don't think it was necessarily property when I started in um, the firm that, that I was initially, you know, doing my work experience in. I 
didn't really know what I wanted to do. I mean, I, I finished my A-levels. I got into the University of Liverpool to do business studies. So right, okay. I always had a bit of a business mind and wanted to make my own business and make my own way. Um, but during my time at the law firm, I, I just really liked dealing with clients. I'm, I'm quite, you know, a people, a people person. person. Yeah, yeah, so I do like dealing with with people. Um, and I just found in conveyancing, you do deal with a lot of people all the time. <laughs> so, um, you know, they're always going through a, a bit of a stressful situation, moving house, you know. So I just found myself comfortable in that situation and I, I did really thrive in, in that environment. So that that was great. That, yeah. Great. Can, can you tell me about, is there a particular lawyer um, that can be a a, a real lawyer, a fictional lawyer who, who who's inspired you or maybe a particular case that you feel has been of significance? I, I always remember when I was, I sort of finished third year uni, sort of start of 2008. Right. And sort of the famous divorce case in the, in the news at that time was um, Paul McCartney's divorce. Yeah. And I was, obviously it has like a local connection as well, mm -hmm. but it's sort of, that probably was one of the things that made me think that would be an interesting area to go into and an interesting thing to do because I sort of like our financial remedy work because it's a lot of different areas of law mm -hmm. sort of mixed into one. You know, we do a yeah. bit of property, but um, probate, well, sorry, wills and probate, private clients, yeah. sort of stuff, yeah. Yeah. business law, so yeah. Didn't her lawyer get a cup of tea yeah, she got, through over? Yeah, she got oh, yeah. a with the... Um, with the water in the court, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. Did she throw it over her own lawyer? No, over Paul McCartney's lawyer, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fiona Shackleton, wasn't it, I think. Yeah, and where is she? Is she at... Um, I think it's... Michigan to Ray? Yeah, I think she was at the time, yeah. 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 And what about you, Phil? Um, but probably f fictional lawyer wise, uh, when I was growing up, it was Ali McBeal. <laughs> but, uh, I soon learned not every law firm's got a bar downstairs. Well, we did know. have a bar, <laughs> we, did for a bit. we did for a little um, bit, yeah. But, uh, but once you kind of um realized that's not always the case, um, case wise, um, probably um, the, the, the biggest and um, most involved case I've, I've, I've um, dealt with was a criminal injuries case, right. um. So the Criminal Injuries Compensation Authority has changed over time, um, but uh, quite a while ago the um, tariff, so the award, was was very high, um, and I'd acted for a, um, a child um, who uh, fr from birth was um, injured by his parents, taken into care, right. um, suffered life-changing injuries, um, and we pursued a, a criminal injuries claim. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't really uh, come to fruition until he was 18, uh, but still never had capacity because of his injuries. Oh, nice. um, and he, he was awarded just over £5 million pounds, right, um, okay. by, by the end of the case for um, because he needed lifelong care. Okay, he was only 18 yeah. at that point yeah, for, yeah. At, at the time of the award. Um, so that was something that still st sticks with me today, really, yeah. in terms of um, remembering visiting him and visiting his carers and seeing the adaptations yeah. to his house and being really involved in pretty much ev everything to do with his family for, for years, really. Yeah. And then, um uh, and I still occasionally see him around and about now with his carers and things. So it's it's nice to oh, yeah, think absolutely. there's been some, some help, really. Yeah, that you've made an impact. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And what what about you, Molly? I mean, compared to that, mine sounds a bit shallow. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, I, I don't know whether you're familiar, but I watched uh, the series Suits. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And I loved it. And, you know, it's not the same as that but when I watched that series I that that was really what got me you know into law as yeah. a whole I mean obviously what I do now is a little bit different but initially when I started I wanted to do commercial law so when I used I watched Suits I always used to think oh, I'd love to do that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah well do you know lots because the, the next question <laughs> I was going to ask was about um you know tv series and fictional law and do we like to watch fictional series about the law or is it a bit like a busman's holiday? How do you feel it matches up um, with the reality of work? Well, I, I, I love them personally, but the, um, I mean, all of the fictional series are never anything to do with any of the work I did. Certainly not there. housing, no. <laughs> it's, always, it's always crime, isn't it? But um, yeah. the, 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 the closest TV programme to anything I do is um, Can't Pay, Take It Away. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, but that's not nice. But um, but yeah, I'm really into most of the 
um, fictional story. I love suits as well. Yeah. Um, it just makes me laugh in suits when they are, you know, they've got, they're in the middle of a big case and they say, oh, father, and then that's it, it's done it. <laughs> that's the bit that makes me laugh. It's just not like, you know, in the office when it takes a while father, to do. what do you mean? <laughs> <I know. laughs> a few people have said, have drawn similarities to people in MSB to people in suits. So <laughs> a few people have mentioned someone being Harvey. So can you guess? Oh gosh, um, he's got, he will be very flattered. <laughs> it's going to have to be uh, Jack or Brad, isn't it? Probably it's, it's Brad. Brad. Yeah. yeah, and someone is referred to as Lewis Litt, apparently. <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, I, I probably feel bad for saying maybe Mark, but I don't because of his litigation. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do litigation. with looks, but his, his litigation it, well, experience is massive. But it's. John McCreaney. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And Dominique compared herself to what's the young lad called? Mike. Oh, Mike. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what about you, Callum? Um, probably a lot of people know the pot Department of Fans of him. Is it the split? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. But I've never actually watched it to be honest because I think I'm one of those people that uh, I don't know. I don't know what it says about me, but, you know, when you're watching something and you're like, well, it doesn't really work like that or it doesn't really work <laughs> yeah. like that, sort of picking the picking the, um, the wrong yeah, bit. Yeah, and the or split whatever. is about the law that you... But apparently it's really, yeah, everyone seems to love it. And it is really anyway. good. What I would say is they breach confidentiality in every single <laughs> yeah. episode. You kind of think that's a breach of confidentiality, <laughs> what you've just done. Yeah. So, so, and you've said um, suits. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great. Okay. Um. How do you think MSB matches up in reality to uh, your expectations of what working in a law firm were or are? Uh, f for me, probably um, more than I thought. In that, you know, I worked for a long, long time in a high street firm, and it's um, kind of like a, a, a daily grind and not uh, much else. Um, you know, and uh, even from when I joined MSB, it's mm -hmm. kind of grown massively, not just in terms of kind of money and staff, but just the ethos really of um, kind of getting out there and doing things and um, um, doing more in the community, expanding beyond the Merseyside region. Um, so it's it's kind of more more than I thought it was really and it's carrying on. Great, good. good. Yeah, good. I'd probably, I'd agree with that. It's because, yeah, it seems to be much more professional, to be honest. I know that's sort of banging our own drum sort of thing, isn't it, really? Well, but, we um, need to bang our own drum. Yeah. <laughs> no one else will bang it. <laughs> but, yeah, I would say to people that this is probably the place where my job's probably been it's easy, really. Right. Um, because of all the support that we have in the background, um, the actual, doing the actual cases and, and managing the actual cases is much easier than it would be elsewhere, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's a credit to everybody that's yeah. kind of in the background doing the things yeah. that, that you don't realise enables you then to get on with yeah. with the job. So that's great. And what about you, Molly? I think for me, MSB has been massive for me because when I, you know, when I first come for my interview with Joan, one of my big goals was to start my training and to become, you know, a chartered legal exec. So when... I voiced that to Jo, she really, you know, made it a priority for when I started to encourage me and, you know, support me to to carry on with my training and do my training. So um, I, I wouldn't, you know, be where I am today on my course without MSB, so it's been huge. And I think it's, it's great for young people who are trying to start out in law and, you know, haven't necessarily gone to university or yeah. gone through the traditional roots of law to you know, make your way up through a law firm, start from the bottom where we've all, you know, we've all been and really, you know, work hard and it does, you know, show off and it does, you know, you, you, you can prove yourself in a firm that does support you. So it, it's been fab. That's great. Great. Okay. And finally, kind of to end, end up, where do you all see yourselves in five years and what do you see yourselves doing on that kind of five year, year journey? What would you like to do? Um, for professionally for me, um personally kind of to to grow the team i've got um to, to have more people in it doing more things uh in a, in a wider area mm -hmm. um and and kind of seeing other people doing what i'm doing now yeah. um 
and and um, taking steps to go out and meet people and make contacts and network and bring work in um, and, and um, pass that on, basically. So more Great. of a, a passing on thing. Great. That's fantastic. Great. And you, Callum? Um, yeah, probably similar, really. Um, hopefully, I would probably personally be a partner maybe oh, yeah. something along those lines <laughs> um and then also just to keep developing the team really and getting involved in more and more niche areas of of our work i know our work's already quite niche but you know there's always further we can specialize in of course you know, yeah countless different yeah. areas you need really. a court of appeal case yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> supreme court yeah. yeah absolutely and what about you molly i want to finish my studies and you know finish my qualification but I think the more I you know grow in, in law the more I realize that there isn't really a limit to what you can do you know especially when yeah. you know you've got people around you that support you so I would love to finish my studies but also just to see what other training is out there you know hopefully convert to a solicitor and then see you know where we can go from there that's fantastic well thank thank you all thank you thanks Thank yeah. you. I really hope you enjoyed this podcast. It's really important for us that we support the next generation of lawyers. And it's also really exciting for me to see amazing lawyers coming through MSB and the contribution that they will make to the future of our profession. If you want to hear or find out anything more about MSB, in particular career paths and options, every year we do a paralegal recruitment drive. Every year we do a trainee recruitment drive. You should visit our website and look on our careers page. We also do lots of things to give back to the community we serve. We write lots of blogs about the topical issues within the law. And these can be accessed through our social media platforms on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.